From 1947 until 1952, the Hooker Chemical Company used the Love Canal section of Niagara Falls as a dumping site for toxic waste. President Carter declared a state of emergency today in the Love Canal area of New York's Niagara Falls, where toxic chemicals were discovered oozing from the ground. This presentation examines the historical circumstances, legal liability, and federal regulations surrounding the environmental disaster at Love Canal. The canal, originally a waterway project, intended to connect Lake Ontario and the Niagara River. It became a waste dumping site after the economic landscape declined and the project eventually failed. The property was eventually sold to the school district and a community was built on top of the site. It's thought that disturbing the ground during construction compromised the underground storage containers Less than 10 years later, evidence of toxic contamination was reported by residents. The situation was made worse due to heavy precipitation and the soil composition on the site. Hundreds of homes and several schools became inundated by toxic waste. Evacuation orders for the town followed shortly thereafter. The result was a federal involvement and in regulation never seen before in the history of the United States. The Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act was passed by Congress in 1980 as a result. The environmental circumstances surrounding the disaster at Love Canal compromised the health of hundreds of residents in what was supposed to be a model plan community. The plan, unfortunately, was to build this community on top of 21,000 tons of industrial toxic waste. It was sold in 1953 to the school district of Niagara for $1, which seems like a steal, and it was, for Hooker Chemical Company, the seller, period. The project was originally proposed by William T. Love, and the plan was to connect these two waterways and to provide a source of cheap hydroelectric power. The project eventually failed around 1910 due to economic circumstances in the United States. Then in 1942, the Hooker Chemical Company received permission to use the site as an industrial chemical waste dump. The water was drained from the trench. It was lined with a semi-impermeable clay layer and 55 gallon barrels of chemical waste was emptied into the canal. The city of Niagara Falls, having once also used it as a municipal dump, stopped dumping on the site. In and around 1950, a huge boom in the local population stemmed the planning of a community to be developed on the site, and Hooker Chemical ended its operations at Love Canal. Directly on top of the dumping site, an elementary school was built. Neighborhoods on both sides sprung up, and in early 1960, residents began to report the sound of large booms, like the sound of explosions, as well as complaints of a chemical smell from the trench. It was thought that the initial construction of the school compromised the integrity of the chemical storage infrastructure, resulting in the release of toxic waste into the ground and swaths. The New York State Department of Health began investigating the site in 1976. Chemo chemical toxicity was found in the basements of schools and several nearby residents. A heavy precipitation season in 1978 caused the seepage of chemical waste to worsen. In the figure above from the New York State Archives, you can see how pollution was made worse by the heavy precipitation. A thick, soft layer of clay lined the bottom of the canal as well as many of the basements in the homes that were constructed, as well as the school. The clay prevented adequate drainage of precipitation. The heavy snowfall and very wet spring of 1978 meant that the chemical toxic waste began to surface in what's called the bathtub effect. A warning to pregnant women and toddlers was first was the first of three health orders issued by New York State Department of Health. New York State Health Department recommended that pregnant women and children under the age of two immediately move out of the area. How many chemicals have been identified as being underground here? So far we know of 88 specific chemicals that, are, that have been identified. And of those 88, how many are suspected of causing cancer? I think the number is 11. Two more federal orders were issued by President Carter. Both included the evacuation of the surrounding area. The pressure came from a swelling grassroots movement that was organized by the local homeowners association. 
I am really, really afraid. Uh, we have decided we're going to get out one way or another. But right now, you know, you just can't jump, and where, where are we going to go? Silverman, who researched the incidents at Love Canal, best documented the severity of the exposure to t children in his 1989 paper on the topic entitled Love Canal, a Retrospective. Gerald Silverman describes the enthusiasm which children who attended the 99th Street Elementary School showed when playing with what they called Pop Rocks. So children that attended this elementary school noticed that certain rocks, when thrown against the concrete, would spark. It was later found that this was due to a high level of phosphorus in the rocks present. Please tell me, do I let my three-year-old stay? New York State ordered that the first two rows surrounding the Love Canal site be evacuated. You can see in the figure here what was referred to as the first ring. The first ring were homes that were directly adjacent from the site, and they're documented here by the little squares with a line between them. A fence was put up surrounding these houses, and those residents were evacuated. Uh, this caused a lot of unrest with the residents who lived in what was called the second ring. The second ring are the houses in a diagram that are little squares but do not have the line through them. Second ring residents didn't understand how a fence separated by a road was supposed to protect them from any toxic waste that the people across the street may be exposed to. Lewis Gibbs and some 700 other families living outside the evacuated area were told they were not in imminent danger. They put up a fence and every time I went in and out of the driveway I seen the fence and I was told that people on that side of the fence had to leave and I had to stay. <laughs> which didn't make sense to me at, at all. By late spring of 1980, more than 950 residents were to be evacuated. The amount of controversy that surrounds the evacuation of Love Canal includes rather not the remediation of the site would cause further contamination and the level of compensation for the different rings of contamination. Should ring one be compensated more than ring two? The Supreme Court of New York determined that any resident that could provide certification from a doctor of exposure would be relocated and compensated. However, doctors, in fear of backlash from the hooker company, were reluctant to sign certificates of contamination. The fear was that by assigning these certificates, they'd be indirectly, or indirectly assigning blame to the chemical company. In August of 1979, the situation became much worse. It was a hot summer, a humid summer, which caused the toxic fumes in the air to become more severe. Several residents got deathly ill. The Canal Task Force, which was created by the New York State Department of Transportation, was overwhelmed with calls from residents complaining. It was the responsibility of NYDOT to do some of this eva evacuation. And the controversy over the Ring 1 around the site and Ring 2 heightened that we stood up up here at Love Canal, ordinary, law-abiding people, and we weren't afraid. The spike in health concerns re-energized the grassroots movement, and they overwhelmed the uh, New York State Department of Transportation with phone calls. This initiated the Red Cross and NYDOT to evacuate 25 additional families. And by September of 1979, the Supreme Court ruled that the task force evacuate any resident that complained of ill effects due to the contamination and suspended the doctor certification requirement. The sale of the property surrounding Love Canal to the school board was viewed as a relief for the chemical company as it was thought to alleviate them from any future liability, litigation, and claims of damage. The company sold the property for the sum of one dollar. Above, you can read the liability clause that was negotiated with the selling of the property. The limited liability clause allowed the Hooker Chemical Company to walk away with their hands dirty and the responsibility of what to do with the land in the hands of the Niagara Falls School Board. Rather, the moral obligation of the sale lay in the hands of the school board or Hooker Chemical. The consequences were dire. Construction began shortly after the sale, and the development activity breached the contamination infrastructure, allowing the release of toxic chemicals. And of course, as we said, residents began to take notice about 1970. After an increase in the cases of leukemia and several birth defects were discovered. 
You could see the fear on some of their faces today as men, women, and children gathered for blood tests to determine whether those here have developed abnormalities. The federal government eventually bought the Love Canal site for $15 million, which include 400 homes. A federal district judge ruled Hooker Company, Hooker Chemical Company negligent, but not recklessly so, in the disposal of their waste products. Restitution sums were ordered to pay by Hooker Chemical in the amount of $129 million. This event inspired the formation of the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act of 1980. More commonly known as the Superfund Program, this act prevents the absolution of a company responsible of environmental pollution when selling a contaminated property. Inspired by the liability clause of the Hooker Chemical Company and the disaster of, at Love Canal, this act requires any company found responsible for chemical contamination legally responsible for the full cost of the cleanup. The EPA as a result now publishes a hazard ranking system as well as a national priorities list. Since the incidents at Love Canal, more than 1,300 Superfund sites have been established in the United States, according to the national priorities list. 399 have been removed from the list. An estimated 70% of Superfund cleanup costs has been paid by the responsible parties. During the Obama administration, Congress assigned $1.3 billion to the organization, but that was recently cut by 30% by President Trump. Progress of the site of Love Canal has prompted the EPA to propose removing it from the Superfund program in 2004. All references used in this research can be found in the description of this video.